Okay, guys, um, hopefully you'll all be seeing me nice and clear. Um, I do have a bit of a lag on my end here. So um, if I say to you, okay, any questions, I then have to wait maybe about 10 seconds before you guys hear that. Yeah. So guys, how's the sound level? Is it coming through okay? Do I need to push it up a little bit? Okay, I've pushed my microphone up a little bit, uh, but yeah, it might be if you guys can turn your speakers up, that'd be great. Okay, this seems to be working great. We've got the chat in, and um, obviously you've got me. Yay, great, maybe not. Okay, so we're gonna move across uh, to our interface here for Adobe Premiere, yep. And I'm gonna turn, what I'm gonna do is I've got a, a nice organized project going on to start with. Can we all see Adobe Premiere? Please type in if you can. I'm just waiting for a response on the chat to say that Adobe Premiere is coming through. Great. Okay. So there's going to be some little pauses in this while I'm checking things going on, but I'm going to be confident. I'm just going to keep moving forwards and hopefully I'll find out later if it's been a disaster or not. So um, we need to have a nice organized project here. Uh, but saying that, uh, there's only one thing we need to bring in, which is waking up no sounds. We do have one with sounds on here, but you're not going to hear that. So waking up no sounds import, bring it in and drop it on my timeline. Okay, the reason for starting Adobe Premiere is so we can put markers on it. We can put markers on our clip, which indicate where our sounds want to go. Yes, we could do that in an audio editing program, but you've got to consider that there might be more than one person working on this. So it might be somebody's job here to identify the sounds that need replacing and they would then pass that off to somebody else who would then go about completing that task. So let's have a quick look and see how we're gonna do this. So here is my clip. Uh, let's make them a little bit bigger. And it starts in the black. Uh, an alarm clock I'm presuming is gonna be going off. That's what wakes him up and he turns it off. Turns the lamp on, sits up, has a bit of a sigh and then we can see the fish tank in the background right okay so what we want to do is place markers on our timeline which is going to indicate cue points as to where these sounds are going to come in so i'm going to maybe just wait a second for this is where we want the alarm to go off so i want to place a marker and it's going to be on my timeline the marker is not going to be on my clip this is really important if i select this clip here and then place a marker on it. In fact, I'm gonna hit M on my keyboard and it's placed a marker down here on my clip and I don't want that to happen. I want the marker to be on the timeline here. So make sure you don't have a clip selected. So just click off it. Yeah. If I now hit M, a marker appears up here 
And the advantage is I can label these markers, which are on the timeline. I can't label markers, which are on clips. So double click that marker. And at that point, I'm going to type in alarm. Alarm on. Yeah. And if I wanted to put some comments in there, maybe what type of alarm? Is it a ringing bell alarm? Is it a buzzer alarm? Is it a digital alarm on a mobile? Is it maybe the radio going off? Because some clock radios or old alarm clocks, you can choose to set up to the radio instead of an actual buzzing noise. Click OK. OK, let's play through. Alarm is going on still, imagine. And I'm waiting for a point where there maybe touches. We don't really see him press a button, which is a bit wet to be honest but I do see the clock move so I'm assuming maybe it's hit a button there so at that point again make sure you don't have the clip selected hit M and I'm going to type in alarm off okay we then go up to and this is where we could be nice and frame accurate using my arrow keys I'm going back a couple of key back a couple of frames to there that is a point where the light goes on marker lamp on okay so we get an opportunity here where he starts to sit up so there should be some natural rustling of bed sheets here don't know whether you've included this in your analysis and bed sheets or maybe I want to make say fats I could just say sitting up yeah I'm gonna go for that as long as you recognize what this is going to be or it's transparent enough to whoever might be doing this afterwards that's fine communication skills here guys uh, okay so it sits up and I'm thinking maybe we've got a bit of a sigh here yeah so M marker sigh Okay, so we've got the fish tank. We first time we see it here, but we had this little discussion last time of do we need to hear things we can't see? And sometimes you do, because uh, otherwise, if all of a sudden we just turn the fish tank, the fish tank sound on now, it might sound really odd. It's just going to suddenly appear in the room, um, and that's not what we want. So I am going to put a note here, a little marker saying fish tank. I know it's not fish, it's terrapins. Now let's move forward. And he starts to stand up here. So I'm looking for a noise. Standing up. Oh, I'll put getting up off bed. Okay, we've got some nice little splashing noises here with the terrapins. Uh, there we go, that splash. So I'm just thinking maybe we could add something there. So again, marker, splash. Oops. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're looking for synchronous sounds. These are diegetic sounds, scene sounds, however you want to relate to them. The idea of it being synchronous is they need to match up. So that way what we hear is frame accurate with what we see. If it's not synced up properly there, it's going to really throw us off. It's not going to sell it. It's not going to work well. So I could go through my whole clip here. And there's one. Let's just go with that one. That light coming on, that frame there. Um, put light switch and the light switch does sound different to a lamp switch we've got sash window starting to open again just move forward one frame to that point I'm going to put window open imagine this is being passed to someone else it might be like needs a sash window opening effect yeah wooden 
old rattly yeah so as clear as we can be here it helps us window stops we then get in picks a bowl up and we get a spring the sound of the seeds yeah it would make some sound as it starts to come out the bowl but I'm more bothered maybe about the sound as the seeds hit that looks like a wooden tray the sound of seeds hitting a wooden tray would sound different to maybe hitting a metal tray or a stone surface so things like that you've got to be quite specific about again M and we'll type seeds seed sprinkle and this would go on uh, and again we've got these chopped vegetables they're gonna sound different to the seeds and the window would close we've got pans rattling we've got the wooden spoon against a pan we've got the gloopy sound of a porridge coming out and hitting a bowl We've got a bit of a jump cut here, so it picked. In fact, let's look here. This is easy to miss. He drags and moves the cup before he picks it up. We also have the sound of the coffee pot being dragged. So there's a combination of sounds there if you want to be really accurate, which to sell this will work well. We've got the sound of coffee being poured or a liquid being poured. Cup gets put down. Coffee, put, coffee cup gets put down again. what's going on here okay is deciding so we've got again the glass clunk gets put down and sound of eggs being broke and yolks being dropped in right so what I've done here is I would go through the whole thing and I'd put markers in there and I'd label them to help me later on I'm now going to save this and I'm going to move into Adobe audition right I'm just going to come back um, to our chat and see if there's any questions so far guys is that clear are you following along let me know please So yeah from JT thank you Connor make sure you're all here please give me some feedback oh thank you for the presentation so put yourself in a situation here that maybe you have recorded the film but you've got a friend that owns, owns a Foley studio or is working on sound or it's like it's going to help you out and maybe you've got scene one finished and you want to get cracking on with scene two and you're going to send scene one over for someone to do the foley then that'd be a great way to do this wouldn't it you could literally save this project you could put markers on it you could forward it with the footage and someone else could work on this yeah you guys are seeing the delay here i suppose because you type in your comments in and it's coming up immediately in the youtube window but by the time it actually hits the screen here you get an appreciation for the delay. Okay, so what's next is we're going to go into Adobe Audition, which I'll open up in a second, and I'm going to import in the project which I've just done. So I'm not just importing in the video clip. If I import in the project, the project it also imports those markers. So let's have a look at that now.
Okay guys, so you should be seeing Adobe Audition on our screen. Yeah. Let me give you a quick talk through of what we're seeing here. It is very similar to Adobe Premiere in that it has obviously multiple windows so you can move around and yours might look like this to start with because up here you have different layouts and um, hence it's used for podcast and radio production. There's lots of different workspaces, etc. Um, but the one we're looking for is this one, which is edit audio to video. So by clicking on that, it opens up this video window here, uh, which we'll be able to use to help synchronize our video. You can move all these windows around as well to match. Yeah, so I'm just gonna leave that there. Up here is where our video will be. This will be our timeline. And here we can see media browser, files. This is very similar to what it is in Adobe Premiere. And we've got history, etc. So files is where I'm gonna start. So I'm gonna right click, import. And I'm gonna go, there's my sounds, which I don't wanna import yet. I'm gonna to go to my desktop. I'm gonna to go to my nicely organized Foley session. I have a Foley here for Premiere Pro projects. And that is what I was just working on. I'm going to import that open. Okay, so for some weird reason, it's not fetch the video in. I'm not too worried about that. But what you can see here is these little markers, which all indicate what we put in using Adobe Premiere. So if you come and do this and find the video, the associated video file doesn't import with it, don't stress. What we can do is go to import and go and find that video file. And wake it up, no sounds, bring it in. And we can see it there, it's an MP4, which is a video format. I'm gonna drag that and place that at the top. It will say only one video clip per session. Would you like to replace the existing one? I'm saying yes, because the existing one's not working. It might be working fine on yours. And I'm just going to move it around so that way it's at the start of my timeline, like so. So now as I scrub through this, we can see that video appearing and then markers are syncing up perfectly to go with what we want to do. Okay, I'm just going to hang on a few seconds here and see if a couple of you guys can confirm this is all coming through okay. Yeah, Rob, yeah, I'm not Rob, sure I'm why, sure why it, didn't it didn't work properly work either. either. Um, um, I'm just I'm thinking, just thinking it might be, be, I might be running a slightly different version of Premiere to Audition, Audition regarding the Creative Cloud updates. updates. So maybe so they're maybe not they're talking to each other as well as they should. should. But it doesn't, doesn't matter. Okay, so okay, once you're in this timeline time space here, here, you can you zoom in and out using this little bar at the top. You can use your plus and minus keys on your keyboard like you would do in Adobe Premiere. Um, what you've got here is multiple tracks. And the idea being here, you can add multiple tracks in Adobe Premiere, but it's not gonna give you as many as this. It's not, they're not as easy to manage. So they're a lot easier and nicer to manage in here. You can group tracks together and add effects to them, etc. That's called ganging um, or bus or ad making buses, but don't need to go there at the moment. So this is really the tool of choice for doing any audio work. Right, so we're getting to a point where I need to bring in some audio. I've just been informed that there's a bit of an echo going on. Please uh, put something in the chat if it is sounding echoey, so that way I'll know for future. I'm gonna to go to import and I'm gonna go and find some of my sounds. Okay, so hopefully you guys have created a folder of sound effects which you've recorded. And here's mine. Um, I'm missing a few still. I do have to record. I've got some more recorded. I've not transferred them into this folder. But I'm gonna start with the obvious ones I need. And I've got a couple of different options here. I've got two alarm clocks. I've got some bed sheets. And I've named these, so that way it works well for me. I'm gonna start with the alarm clocks. So I'm gonna bring them in, open it up. 
I'm going to see how this works. So I'm going to drag this and I'm going to place that on that track. And straight away you can start to see the waveform. And if I play it, you don't like that one, it sounds like a klaxon. Let's have a listen to Alarm Clock 2, MP3. Hmm, don't mind that actually. I think I'm gonna go with that one. Okay, so we can see the point where we want the alarm to start and we want the alarm to stop. So I can just trim my clip here, like so. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and I'm gonna get the start of my sound to be right there. I'm gonna play. We then get a little click. That click might be really useful actually. I want to do a cut. I can go up to one of these options here and we can split the clip. Or what I could have done is use the same shortcut key which is in Adobe Premiere which is Command K and it will also split the clip. So I want to save that little piece over there because I might use that sound for when the alarm clock gets turned off but what I do need to do is make my alarm go on for longer so I could re-import that clip and drag it and trim it down and add it to the end or I can just duplicate this one here I'm going to hold down the alt key on my keyboard I'm going to drag that to one side and it replicates my clip for me and I'm looking at the space in the gap between these clips and I'm going to Keep going. So that way we get effectively a loop of that clip. I'm going to play that. Okay, so the frequency of them is a little bit close together. So let's move them a bit further apart so that we get a repetition. And there is where the alarm is going to go off. So I'm going to trim that put it to there and I'm going to look at this little click sound I've had here and I'm going to drag it down to track two. Zoom in a little bit closer. I'm going to trim that to there and put that sound perfectly on my marker right there. So let's have a play. Right, okay. Don't want the rest of that. Trim that off. Okay, we can change the volume for each of these tracks quite easily as well. So we've got audio one here. That's a volume. Drag the mouse left and right when clicking on it and it's gonna turn it up and down. Double click on it and I can put a value of zero in it. This is my left and right. If I want a sound maybe going from the left speaker to the right speaker, I could actually keyframe that as well and have it like a car passing, etc. So all you want maybe sound coming out of one channel and another sound coming out of another. So that allows you to do that. We have M for mute, S for solo, and R for record. We don't need to record anything on here. So it might be that I want the sound on track one to be a little bit lower. So I'm going to click and drag and maybe take it down 3 dB. That'll do. I might want to name these as well. So I can double click on audio one or single click it's doing it. I'm going to type in alarm. Yep. Uh, that one, I'm going to go alarm off. Actually, I'm not going to name that one. I'll just leave that as it is because I might add some other sounds into this. Um, so anything that I then place on that track will have minus 3 dB. So if you end up stacking or putting sounds together on the same track, it's going to, be, it's going to have the same effect added to it. So let's look next. So it goes through this, the alarm turns off. Oops, just moved the wrong clip, there we go. We're going to get lamp coming on. So 
Boom port. Let's go to my sounds. I could bring all these in at once, but it can get a little bit cumbersome here. And I've got a lamp and I've got a light switch. Let's open them both up. Okay, let's look at lamp switch. Bring it in. And let's have a little play. And trim that a little bit. I'm going to put that in the right place. Thank you for letting us know about the echo and hopefully it's not too distracting. I'll try and fiddle with some settings next time. Okay, so let's have a quick listen, see if this lamp turned on is in sync. Works well. Okay, cool. So now we've got some more subtle sounds and these are gonna be asynchronous. Uh, we're gonna know he's sitting up, but we're gonna hear the sound before we actually see him move. So it's still an important thing to include. We just don't want dead sound in there. So I'm going to go to import, and I have some shots, uh, some sounds, sorry, of some rustling bedclothes. So again, it was just some material that was just rubbed together. I believe at the time in the studio, it was just a jacket. Um, if you really want to be very accurate, it might be that you'd get a particular type of linen or cloth, and you'd rub them together to see what works best. So there's quite a bit of experimentation in Foley sounds. And I just want to preview one of the sounds on its own. I can double click it and it'll open up in its own window. Hit play. Okay, let's listen to bed sheets too. Bad recording, that one. Bed sheets three then. None of them are good recordings. So let's just go to bed sheets one. And we're gonna make do with this one for now. So let me just go back to my multi-tracks. Once we've double clicked one, we go into this waveform view. But when to go back to our multi-track, we want to click on these buttons up here. Okay, so let's bring in bed sheets. I'm gonna put bed sheets on the same channel as audio two for now. And again, you again, see, see we've got a bit of a lead in here, which we won't maybe want to trim off. Maybe actually, let's put it under here and maybe we can have crossover a little bit. So lamps turned on, we start to hear some noise there before he sits up. Sound goes on longer than I need it to. So I can possibly just trim that down. Tap it to there. I could have just done a cut. Maybe take it to there. And I'm gonna maybe turn that down a tad as well. Maybe down a little bit more. Okay, let's just move on. I can always polish it later. Let's go and see if we've got anything. Oh, I don't have the sound of the sigh. So that's something I would need to get for when we see our character put his hands up to his face. The sound of skin, contact of hands on skin, that might be something as well. So again, we'd look for a sound there. That's one which is maybe I'm identifying as missing. I'm gonna go away and do some recordings of. Okay, the next thing we get is a change of shot here where the fish tank comes in. So let's have a look and see what I've got for that. Fish tank. Okay. Let's see how this is. Oops. Okay, so what I've got here is a constant recording of a fish tank. Let's have a quick play. Very loud, so let's take this down. Take it down even more. That's better. 
Okay, so it could so be, could be very, very subtly, subtly, this sound is there from the beginning. Let's have a listen. Would have a sigh sound. Now we can see the fish tank. Just leave it there for now. Getting up off bed. And I want a little splash sound there as well. So I do have some sounds for these. So I have standing up. And I've got some splashes as well. So let me bring that in. So that's like my standing up sound. Getting up off bed. You zoom in. So that was somebody counting this in. So have a look closer at this. So there is where one. What I could do is I could delete that by selecting and hitting delete. Okay, now I go back to multi track and find it's actually been trimmed for me there. Okay, that's hard to hear. It's on minus six. So let's put it up to here. So another listen. There, that little creek it sounded quite realistic that works well and I'm looking now for in fact I'm going to trim that back and I'm looking for a splash so let's have a listen to splash one well that's quite good again get rid of the lead in I'm going to maybe move it down into a track where it's quieter. Let's have a listen. Not bad. Let me just line that up to there. Okay, so guys, can we see where this is going? Oh, just add one more for now. A light switch, because I did have a lamp switch and add a light switch. And let's listen to lamp switch. Yeah, let's listen to the light switch. So there's multiple instances of this. Okay, so it's got a different tone to it. It's definitely a different pitch. So I'm gonna just get one of these little clicks. So I'm gonna delete the rest. And then I'm gonna go into multi track effects. I'm gonna bring light switch in, place it here. Zoom in a little bit. And it's gonna be right there. Oops. Okay, we need to consider if we hear this sound or not, because our audience, our viewer, is outside in the street, looking up at a distance of maybe 10 meters away with windows which are closed. There's maybe ambient traffic noise in the background. So would we actually hear this or not? I don't think we would um, if we were inside the building or it was night time uh, out in the country and windows were open then maybe would faintly hear it so things like this uh, need to be considered otherwise it's not gonna sell well it's gonna sound it's gonna sound fake it's gonna sound and everyone's gonna instantly know this has been dubbed over so things like that we don't need what we might want though 
is some outside traffic noise. Import. Got to look at the context of where the scene's been shot. I'm not exactly sure where Rocky is living at this moment in time. I think it was set in Detroit, wasn't it? Um, but I do have some city noise. So let's just drop this in. And let's have a listen to our city noise. Okay, so let's go back. It's very a dominant city noise without a doubt, yeah. Um, what I've not done here is gone. Oh, what is this here? Oh, okay, I've zoomed right out. I can now see it's fish tank. I'm going to label it fish tank. Helps me, doesn't it? Yeah, and I know I've turned it down to minus 19. So there's a point here where we need our fish tank to end. And it's going to be when he's left, left the room. So he does leave the room before the light switch goes on. So at that point, I could do a cut. So I could go up to here and split. Or I can do Command K, select and delete. I do want to bring in my city noise now. I want to bring it in on a separate track. So There we go. And let's have a quick listen. Let's have the city noise start. Put it on the same track at minus 19 and see how it balances. That light switch, I don't like. I'm going to delete it. Don't want it. Okay, we're about to get the sash window opening. I do have a sound effect for a sash window. So, so there's going to be a point here where we are outside the building and we go back inside there. So, whether we hear the city sounds but much more muted from inside this room or whether it's an amazing triple glazed window which knocks all the sound out that's again something you'll have to decide and something you'll have to balance. So by using the dB scale on here to change the volume, it's going to allow, allow that to happen. There's various ways of also going into the equalizer settings on here to make some sound sound more distant, etc. And we can look at that at another point. But for now, really, I wanted to get you guys building. I want to you to maybe recognize some of the sounds you've not got, which you need to go and get. But it would be good for you today to work with the sounds you have got and start to add them in. If you do the process of adding markers in Adobe Premiere Pro, it's really going to make you recognize each of the sounds. And it might be that you start putting markers in place and then you start to realize, oh, I need to make a note. Uh, that's a sound which I need to get because maybe I've not got it. It might be that you've recorded a sound and it doesn't synchronize well or it doesn't sound appropriate it sounds maybe like denim rubbing together instead of bed sheets etc so it's about you being choosy and making some good choice and evaluation of what is going to work well and what's not that's what's really important yeah okay guys uh, I'm just gonna go back to the chat for a second uh, I'm gonna see if any questions come through uh, about anything Okay, guys any questions please ask if it's clear let me know as well 
if you are reflecting on maybe the sounds you've got and want to comment on maybe what you need to do share that with a group it might be they can also pick up on this <laughs> uh, I'll consider that request Rob maybe I'll put that as a live tutorial on here might scare, might scare a few people off first though okay comments on the process on Premiere Pro and Adobe Audition please or questions Uh, yeah, Andy, if you've got Adobe CC, you should be able to um, download Adobe Audition as part of a package. I believe it's part of it. I know why the echo is now gone, because I've turned off the sound source coming from the computer. Yeah, correct. I would definitely tweak the sound. I mean, I'm at the disadvantage at the moment while well, I'm streaming this, I'm listening to myself and there is a slight echo as well. Uh, so I would actually want to just solo listen to that sound through headphones. Um, and it does make a big difference. Something I'd like to add as well is that sometimes you try to balance your audio by listening to it through speakers. And unless you've got a, a very um, sound correct ambient room and some really good quality speakers you're never really going to hear truly what it sounds like headphones do give you a better balance of the audio and you'll find there's a wider range of sounds which comes from the headphones as well so sometimes you might listen to something from speakers and you can't hear a background noise or a buzz or a hum but once you use headphones you'll hear it uh, and chances are other people might listen to your product through headphones or they might listen to it on a good set of speakers are in a nicely balanced room and all of a sudden what you didn't think was a problem is then obviously there so using a good set of headphones to edit is advisable as well So guys, chance for questions. Anything you want me to go back over before we uh, finish the session? For those of you out there, Adobe Audition is available through the uh, Creative Cloud suite. If you've not subscribed to it, you can get it on a seven day free trial as well. Uh, I'm hoping you could do this process in Adobe Premiere. You will find that managing multiple audio tracks isn't as friendly as what it is using Adobe Audition. Are we doing all of the clip? Yes, uh, the whole clip is only about a minute and a half. Uh, the dog sound effect is my dog kicking off in the background. Uh, I'm glad you've got the software you need, Eleanor. That's good, yeah. Great. That's that's the way to do it, uh, James. You really you just mess around with things. Click on them, on click them. If it really screws up, shut it down, open it up again. Um, that's the great thing about digital learning. Um, there are lots of tutorials as well just to get you started and introduce you to some of these tools which are available on the LinkedIn education which is lynda.com which you guys have uh, access to so I'm not saying I don't want to teach you it I'm saying we're obviously limited with uh, our connectivity at the moment but you also need to uh, take the initiative to, to explore and learn some of that as well so if you get really stuck please come back to me so any question any more questions before we uh, move away from this
Okay, guys, um, we're going to end the session here. I believe I've got you guys booked in to come back at half past one today and it's not going to be a long one. What we're going to be doing is looking at the assignments because there's deadline dates, there are portfolios you need to produce and there is digital edits which you need to complete as well. So we're going to come back onto Teams at 1.30 and once we're there we can ask, ask any questions, uh, we can talk about what work you will want need to put into your portfolio and also meeting that deadline, yeah. Oh, quick question, how do we send back to Premiere Pro? Um, I would highly advise that once you have done your audio in here, you export the audio. Yeah, so if you go to File, Export, you can save it as an MP3, ideally a .wav, it's better, better. And then you can go up to Premiere Pro and you can import that audio track, place it underneath your video track, synced to start at the same time. There is a dynamic link option, but it's a little bit iffy. It doesn't always work well. So I'd be, con I'd be cautious about that. Once you've done your work in Premiere with your markers, I'd recommend that you then finish with Premiere, come into Adobe Audition, do what you're doing here, export the file, go back to Premiere in this instance. That tends to work a lot better. Okay, guys, I'm going to end this now. Can you just give me all a quick goodbye so that way I can see you all still here and alive with me? So just type me a little goodbye, please.